The adult beverages are poured. The kids are asleep. Welcome to New Dad Gaming, a show about fatherhoods. Oh, fatherhoods. Sure. Fatherhoods. There's more than one. Fathers in the hoods. <laughs> the adult beverages are poured. The kids are asleep. Welcome to New Dad Gaming, a show about four. Son of a. <laughs> Speaking of sure, rage. It's a rage. You should put this in the opening clip. <laughs> <laughs> The adult beverages are poured, the kids are asleep. Welcome to New Dad Gaming, a show about fatherhood, gaming, and new fathers figuring out their gaming lives. My name is Trevor, and I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And I'm Jeff. I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. I am so angry. (laughs) Why are you angry? (laughs) Nah, I'm a happy guy. But generally, but this episode, we're going in on anger, rage, gamer rage, rage quitting, Angry gaming moments with dads, just a number of things. So <laughs> Jeff and myself came up with a couple stories coming through, and it all really came about because of an amazing dad rage moment we were sent. And as a bit of a preview, the gaming dad victory of the week. So it's yep. There was just so much dad rage out there. We thought we'd tap into that sweet <laughs> content vein. <laughs> we need to vent a little. We need to vent it out. <laughs> yeah, gaming dad, you can't keep your gaming rage inside because it comes yep. out in the worst ways possible <laughs> <laughs> but the two um of all of them that came about it actually reminded me when i was younger and i had rage moments and the <laughs> i can recall too after this first story okay. like the initial reaction was like i, I wanted to take it back so quickly because there was a threat of losing the game specific story like my parents taking the game away yeah that's the ultimate threat right so like you're you th- lose your cool you blow up as a kid and that's like you want to lose the game like no 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 I'll be calm. <laughs> you back down so quickly <laughs> uh, so so i was playing my uh, brother in i th- snes and i think it was madden 94 95 something okay. One, the old super nintendo versions of madden which i still <laughs> i still kind of hate to this day <laughs> for these reasons wow this is deep but we're he was much better than me and we are in this intense match. Let's call it a Super Bowl of small kid SNES football. And okay. I throw this massive pass, right? And it's looking good, and it's looking good, and it's coming right down into my guy's hand. And it, the best that I can perceive it is it goes through my guy, right? And oh, land, no. and his guy catches it. So interception. Yep. And he goes flying back and gets like a touchdown immediately. <laughs> like, okay. I, yeah. I, I am thrown into such a fit of rage that little me stands up. It's like, that's impossible. <laughs> that's impossible. You can't go through things. I start beating my chest. Right? Like, so I'm taking my fist and like hitting my own chest. Like, look, look at this. You can't go through a chest. That's not how it works. <laughs> like, that's how enraged I am. So imagine like tiny kid. And my brother's probably just like laughing his head off. But I'm just, so I'm standing oh, yeah. and just like pounding my chest, like, see, you can't go through <laughs> all over SNES oh Madden of all things. And, I, and of course, much like I <laughs> alluded to, parents came and was like, do you want to lose the game? Do you want me to take it away? Like, no, no, no. Sit back down. No, we're good. We're good. Why are you pounding your no, chest? <laughs> if you hate this game so much, why do you want to play it? No, I want to keep playing it. I love that. That's a great illogical leap too, where it's, <laughs> you are so mad and you are so angry, but you want to keep playing this what yeah what's your what's your reasoning you go back to the one that hurt you come on this we need to beat it the other one i can remember was playing mike tyson's punch out oh don't mention that one that one's horrible (laughs) (laughs) and specifically um soda popinski uh i hated that guy right and i had i had it was an absolute brick wall to me i'd lost to him so many times and with that game too, like it's, you know every move, you know every little hint, you know exactly how he's going to do it, and some you just still can't get it right. Yep. So I'm not sure exactly my age for it, but I remember this is more like I just raged through it. Okay. And finally, this one this one time I finally beat him. The beat him for the first time I'd ever been able to get past him, and I was so like elated and angry and frustrated. Like I stood up and I started to mimic his dance. Oh, so every okay. time he knocks you, every time he knocks you down, like he you know waddles to the middle of the room, he's like ding ding ding, like he's 
doing some like fake punches to kind of like mock you. So after okay. I beat him, finally I stand up, and again here there I am, small little me in my living room, yep. standing up doing this like Mike Tyson punch out dance because I'm like yeah in your face I did it like I finally beat you. <laughs> It's, it's, it's you and the, the emotions, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Should not have should not have been playing games. <laughs> no, it's my uh, my gaming dad father was uh, irresponsible not to take these away from me. I apparently can't <laughs> handle my emotions. <laughs> but the, yeah, so I mean, so a rage moment that almost cost me the game a rage elation dance, right? <laughs> to a Mike Tyson uh, boss. Uh, for yourself like what's uh has there been any anger with <sighs> games or what type of uh what what's the emotion in games that you have recently jeff <laughs> so i have two little stories one is from the uh from ages ago um not mike tyson era but it was actually final fantasy 7 one of my oh. most beloved games i love that game when it came out i was addicted to it i loved every minute of it and before the modern era of cloud saving and auto saving. You had to save (laughs) at areas that were marked or in the overworld. And in Final Fantasy VII, I had gone through, I don't know, like a couple hours worth of work. I was getting like the side characters and stuff. And if you remember correctly, Trevor, because I think you Mm -hmm. have played the game. I beat this one. There are weapons that just wander the world, Ruby and Emerald. (laughs) Those guys are the worst. If you happen to accidentally, you know, kind of get caught by one at some point without saving, that that could be an issue, <laughs> yeah. and you could literally be ending up in a in a battle where you have this monstrosity in front of you. And I remember my jaw to the floor, like, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, 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 no! Run the away! The chances of getting them is like one and whatever. Like people have to search the world to to get them to come after you. And I remember just staring, like, "Oh, that's it! My time's over. That sucks. That's all my gameplay oh. down the tubes." Did you try to run? I tried to run. <laughs> no, it does a <laughs> laser thing effort. and just like eliminated my party. Just like done. That's oh, it. It's one shot. It's one shot kill. And the one I remember, I think it was Emerald, the guy in the sea. In the, yeah, to, you, under the ocean, you have, yeah. You have to get something special before you're even allowed to yep. fight it. You can't just otherwise, fight it. No, otherwise there's a time limit or something. It, it ticks down on you. Uh, it was and horrible. Kinda, that makes me want to watch a, you go watch on YouTube or someone <laughs> actually beating it. Because it, it was impossible. It was not impossible. I couldn't do it. There's no way. You would have to, I don't know, there's special items that you have to get. And, and I don't know. It has a crazy age. amount of hit points. In the age before the internet, too, where it's just you would yeah. not have any hints or guides. Nope. You had to go and, out and get the Brady, the Brady Games Guide or whatever, and it told you to stay away from them. <laughs> oh, man, drop it. That's one thing. That, again, that's one of those things that the new generation will just not understand, like the losing yeah, of a no. save file. Of a save file just of all your progress because you didn't get to the save file. Hours right, right. lost. Hours even, lost. Even running into something that you didn't know about, because you could just go to YouTube and be like, all right, what is this thing? How do I beat it? And I was just staring at the TV screen like, are you kidding me? This is this is insane. And, and it just obliterated. Like, that was oh. it. That was my t- Now, luckily, <laughs> I was see. younger. Yep, back in my yeah. younger days, I could re- recoup that time. It was easy to do, but still, I didn't like doing it. I'll say just, just quick on that YouTube thing. I think, have you ever had a situation where, I've had a number where it's, I wonder. I, I'm not sure how to do something in a game, so I YouTube it. Like, oh, how do you do yeah. this thing? And then I see somebody do it, and I'm like, oh, oh, I'm not doing that. Oh, geez, no, no, <laughs> yeah, like, there's no way. Yeah, I don't have that type of time. I'm not doing this. No, no. <laughs> Leave so, it to the YouTubers. So what's the yeah. what's the second one? What's the uh, okay? The second, the second one moment? is more is more current, and I will say that uh, I beat Zelda Breath of the Wild. Hey, there it is. Yep. Not gonna spoil the ending. But I'm extremely disappointed at that ending. <laughs> no way. Yeah, no, man. It is. It. Yeah. Uh, I again. I can't really? go into too much details because I'm sure that people you, out there haven't played it, including yourself. So, Hero and Zelda. Yep. And a Triforce and yep. Gandalf. Yep. How do you mess it up? It's, oh well, I, there's many ways, Trevor. <sighs> One is just you know, you're at the menu screen and you're looking for more. And it's the menu screen oh. saying, "Continue," and you continue, and it's your, it's your save before the final battle, and that, that and that's a, it. 
that's it that's all it and really you gotta be I don't know. It was the only ending I've ever experienced recently where I had to go on YouTube and be like, did I miss something? Did I just get like the worst ending possible and it just didn't explain anything? So, no, that's pretty average. That was my Moss experience because it's just looking at at the screen and then you you press some buttons and, yeah, you kind of get back into your game. You're like, oh, well, this this isn't it. And then YouTube, secret ending, correct ending, best ending. Right. Mm, nope. That's it. That's that was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's got it. That's one of the worst feelings in gamings. I think it's uh, that. It, is that all? <laughs> it it didn't it didn't properly bookend my experience because I spent quite a bit of time in that game. I think it was fifty sixty hours getting that game completed. And I was looking for more because I was ah, I was on the journey with Link and I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling him. I know where he's going. I know what's happening in the world, and I wanted a little bit more. And uh, maybe it's gonna be a sequel. They don't. I don't know. Like there's DLC to get, but it has nothing to do with yeah. what ending I got. So I don't know. I was disappointed, <laughs> kind of angry, but it was more disappointment. Yeah. So that one, that one definitely came to me with uh, Mass Effect Three, and we we've talked about this on, on a much much oh, yeah. episode. Yep. But I actually, I was so upset. I actually called another gaming dad friend of ours. I thought you were going to say you called the company. You're like, <laughs> listen, <laughs> this can't be it. <laughs> no, I went for a walk with them to talk it through because I was just like, I was so emotionally connected to that game. Yeah. Over the course of three different ones. Right. And then for it to end the way it did, it was just like, I had to talk to somebody. Like I couldn't just let it go. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Well, That's it's like, oh. four or five years in your time, right? Three games, it's about that time. Five years. Yeah. So you're connected, and, and all of a sudden it's like, it's over. And this is how it ends. In the worst way. What? <laughs> <laughs> but I it's want not doing it justice. Yet. <laughs> no. Please. Please, no. It was rage inducing. Oh. I would not have, I would never have expected that from a Zelda game because it's just so, again, it, it's so formulaic. It's the yep. same stew, it's the same ingredients every time. Yes, and maybe Payoff. that's what I should expect. Maybe because you know this it ends kind of similar over the years, but I don't know. In the age of Witchers and even Horizon and God of War, like these huge narratives, and it was building to something, and then it was just nope. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, no. you win. It didn't even say congratulations. I'm mad oh. about that. Come on. All the bases belong to you. Congratulations. That's right. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, but that will... Now for a heck of a rage story, uh, this was submitted to us from Gaming Dad Alex. And it it's a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so he has two kids. Uh, sorry, three kids. And uh, I think all three of them, especially one of them, were heavily into Fortnite. Okay. Which, which, you know, that's, as far as gaming dads, we know that's never a great way to start a story. But the, <laughs> but Fortnite is heavily being played in this household. And unfortunately, it's now gotten to that point where it's tipped over into kind of the unhealthy side of things. Right. Where, you know, we're, we're being late for soccer practice. We're not doing chores. We're not answering. I think there's some cases where the uh, one of yeah. the kids was waking up early before the rest of the house so he could go down and play it like get an extra oh, time wow. type of thing right yep so yep. like i said so it's tipped into that unhealthy Dedicated. thing and just yeah. it's it's one of those things that are continue to build and build and build and pressure comes up and finally <laughs> it happens and i guess to, to be clear too it wasn't this wasn't a blowout rage moment necessarily in some ways it was calculated so okay. I, I don't want to try to, I don't want to, I'm just trying to be careful. I don't want to present this as like, and then he no. lost it and like flipped out. No. Like, this was kind of a calculated, okay, this is, this is what, this, kind of thing. this is, the, bubbled over is a great way. To, this is the situation. This is the action. You guys enjoy this. So in a particularly heated situation with Fortnite, he decides that's enough. This is not how the family's going to run. Here's what's <laughs> going to happen. Kids follow me right now. So the father goes into the living room and grabs the Xbox One okay. and beckons the kids, okay, follow me. Uh-oh. Take, takes the Xbox One, walks into the front of the house, to the driveway. Kids in tow, kids are following down. 
Mm. And it's like, this is enough. This is it. He throws it up in the air as high as he possibly can. <laughs> Having the Xbox One sail down onto his driveway and smash into oh, like no. a thousand pieces. <laughs> there oh are God. neighbors across. There's neighbors across the street seeing this. Oh. There's like neighborhood kids who get to see this. And it was just it was the ultimate solution as far as that's enough. Yeah. Like I've warned, we've talked about this. This isn't just let's put it in a closet because then you know it's there and I have to hear about it in two weeks. You have yeah. gone too far. This is the this consequence. Is that is the final straw. <laughs> just picture in slow motion <laughs> as this Xbox One slowly turns in the air <laughs> as it catapults. <laughs> And come sailing towards in the ground. Just the you know, slow-mo. And then, yeah, pan back as the kids' faces, their, their mouths get wider and wider in shocked horror as their Fortnite gaming system of choice just goes <laughs> careening towards just the ground. In to pieces. Smashed. In pieces. Oh. So the, yeah, and I said, I want to be clear, it wasn't like a fly off the handle uh, moment. It was very, much more calculated to prove a point. What's interesting is, I think this happens with, I mean, I found that with my own kid too, is that once you follow through on something. Yeah. Right. Where you I've have said, to commit. You, know, you have to commit and follow through, right? Like, yeah. Like I've said to him, it's, if you don't behave, we're going to leave. Like I'm going to pick you up yeah. and take you home. And he doesn't yeah. behave. And it's like, here yeah. it is. And you pick him up. <laughs> I once carried, I carried him, I think for like once 10 minutes oh my God, from like heavy. a park back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I need to keep going to the gym just to keep yeah. one step ahead of him. But it's the next time I said it, it was just very much like, oh, he'll do it. Like, he's not choking around. Yep. And yeah, I've, I've had situations like that. We had uh, my wife's birthday and the kids were acting out and I said, no birthday cake. That's like the uh, ultimate because they were expecting wow. the cake. And nope. Sorry. Followed through. Followed through. Grandma almost nice. didn't. Grandma was trying to get in, like, just give him a little bit. I'm like, nope. It's, nice. It's gone. Sorry. Grandma's always, grandma's always trying to sneak it past. Trying to push the limit, you can't, you can't do that. Listen here, Grandma, you wouldn't have given it to me. <laughs> this is nonsense. <laughs> yeah, <that's true>. yeah. <laughs> Your lap of victory that night, you're just sitting there with the whole cake, like, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the uh, even too is like what what happened afterwards is the like he kind of became a legend in the neighborhood because of course oh, really? there's all all these other parents are like coming up like, oh man, that's so amazing that you did that. That's fantastic. Because others, yeah. like, you know, the Fortnite struggle is, is quite real in many households, right? So this other parent is like, oh, that's that's the dad that, like, threw the Xbox in the air. Oh, got to be Oh, man. <laughs> Don't mess with him. Yeah, parents, like, shaking their hand, like, oh, a true uh, a true hero to us all. <laughs> so, <laughs> man, so kudos. Well, yeah, kudos to gaming dad Alex and, the, <laughs> and that Xbox One sailing so gracefully through the air <laughs> before it ultimate demise. But one angry story begets another, except this next one more involves kids. And even further, we've gone ahead and awarded it the Gaming Dad Victory of the Week. So each week we feature an exceptional gaming dad and often their kids who are doing fatherhood and gaming so well. In war games, there's always casualties. But in, with gaming, if the battle and the tempers flare too hot, sometimes the casualties can be found outside the game. Uh, Jeff, why don't you describe this week's post? <laughs> All right. Well, we have a photo of what looks to be a high-definition television that has a big blur in the middle of it because it looks like something has struck it with Luigi in the bottom right-hand corner happily prancing along in whatever Mario game this looks to be. Yeah, I would, so, I would say it looks like he's running away from yeah, it could be, the disaster yeah, the, zone. The whole yeah, shattering. Uh, yeah, but the <laughs> so this uh, this gaming dad victory comes courtesy of gaming dad Jeff, and uh, to sum it up, he gave a great write up, and I can't really add anything else to the word, so I'll read it verbatim. I hooked up the Wii U again, and my youngest twins were hooked, primarily on Mario Fight, Smash Brothers, some Mario Racing. A Mario Kart, and Mario Walking, <laughs> otherwise known as New Super Mario U. That is, oh, those naming is fantastic. It's three great activities. Yeah. <laughs> but the but this, referring to the accident, actually happened in a game of Mario Fox 3D World. Okay. 
where my four-year-old and his seven-year-old were battling a boss. The seven-year-old got the final blow and started doing the Fortnite loser dance, oh. which, which enraged the younger child. Enough to go up and hit the TV with the butt end of the Wii U Pro Controller. It broke. Oh, no. <laughs> the Wii U was unhooked and still his. <laughs> the four-year-old didn't even understand what he'd done. When I put him to bed that night, he kept saying, maybe it will work tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. One of those self-healing TVs. <laughs> oh, so it's... Uh, more, the Fortnite... See, Fortnite strikes again. It, it's... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You got the common thread there. Like, look, it's just... It's bringing unhappiness to everybody. Man, but the, the kid getting upset... And this time, it wasn't even throwing the controller. It was like walk, walking up and smashing it into the TV. Yeah. All brought on by the other, the older brother <laughs> just bragging and dancing in front of him, which is so cool. Like, that's, of course he does. Oh, of yeah. Of course he does. You would. I think I've done that to my brother. So, yeah. It's just you've my brother. You've probably routine. done that to your kids. What are you talking about? Oh, probably. Yeah. I wouldn't even, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even dispute that. That's probably true. <laughs> oh, so, unfortunately, Wii U has uh, been packed away. <laughs> probably won't be out for a good long time oh i'm telling you like the if uh, if everyone listening if they can go and see the see the picture (laughs) which is first heartbreaking but to see luigi running from the scene of the crime yeah (laughs) it's too priceless but who knows maybe it will work tomorrow (laughs) (laughs) in between gaming teachable moments with his kids um jeff also has his own vlog featured prominently on youtube which i think everybody should check out some of the videos were really quite good he had one from uh, a birthday party which featured no less than a mario and luigi pair of shoes oh. so it seems gaming seems quite the uh, nice thread but the videos are really well produced and it's kind of really cool snapshots of family life which is it's really nice to see and a little bit of gaming mix in there as well so the channel is called the hop father uh, we'll post a link into the show notes, and yeah, I'd suggest all gaming dads go and check it out. Cool. Well, for managing his kids and their rage, and coming up with at least a teachable moment, uh, this week's gaming dad victory goes to gaming dad Jeff. Congratulations! Uh, if you have a story that you'd like to feature for gaming dad victory of the week, send it along to us at our Facebook group or at our website, newdadgaming.com. New Dads, listen up as we go over this week's highlights and what happened in the world of gaming. Well, this might be the beginning of the end for physical discs, at least according to Activision, where Call of Duty Black Ops 4 sold incredibly well online through its digital version, doubling the previous iteration, but severely lacked in the physical disc department. Without providing actual numbers, Activision has said it was the biggest day one digital release in its history, which includes such blockbusters as Destiny and even Guitar Hero. There's another note to the success too, where Call of Duty is featuring a Battle Royale mode, so maybe this is the beginning of the end for PUBG as well. Only time will tell. And did you get a message from a random PS4 user recently? Well, don't open it yet. Many PS4 players were reporting user messages that would brick their consoles, resulting in users having to factory reset their PlayStations before being able to play. Well, Sony has weighed in on the issue and a fix is in the next update, but in the meantime, they warn against factory resetting the console and just delete any messages from their free PSN app on their smartphone. In any event, now would be a good time to review any privacy settings you or your kids have so you can avoid this event in the future. And you may have heard of a small game called Red Dead Redemption 2. Maybe. Well, Rockstar's co-founder Dan Hauser has announced some details on the game, including the over 60-hour main storyline, over a 100 gigabyte file size, and the over 500,000 lines of dialogue that has been recorded. And to make that all happen, it was mentioned that there were senior employees that would work 100 hours in the work week. Now, Dan has gone on to clarify that his statement's saying that not everyone puts in these kind of hours, and if they do, it's because of how, quote, passionate they are about the game's success. Well, even if true, something should be said for the leadership at Rockstar for allowing that not only to happen, 
but to be apparent enough for the co-founder of the company to comment on it. No doubt Red Dead 2 will be a success, but here's hoping to the health of the people and families behind the game as well. And Command and Conquer anyone? EA has announced its interest in creating a PC remaster of the old games for the players. Now this isn't the new dumbed down version that is expected for mobile platforms, but a genuine retelling of the old iconic strategy games when it first launched way back in 1995. EA producer Jim Vasella has chimed in on Reddit saying that they are already exploring the possibility for the series' upcoming 25th anniversary and that there would be no, and I quote, no microtransactions. As with any game by EA, this is kind of a wait and see if they make good on their word, which, if you're a strategy game fan like myself, we hope they do make good. And it seems like a lot of gamers, including myself, are a little confused on the upcoming game from Ubisoft entitled Starlink Battle for Atlas, and whether or not the game requires amiibo-like toys to play and progress. Well, it turns out no additional toys are required to play the space fighting game, which can save a ton of money for us dads out here. But that being said, the game is structured around these toys, so if you just have the base game, you basically just have one life within the game to complete the entire level. Die at the end boss? Well, the whole level resets. So if you have one of the toy ships that you can buy and connect to the game, that acts as a second life. If you have more ships, more lives. So if you're really into this sci-fi game, and especially if you're playing with your kids, you might want to save some frustration and those gray hairs and buy some additional toys, or perhaps the starter toy pack to get you on your way. And as for video game releases this week, some highlights include the mentioned Starlink Battle for Atlas and LEGO DC Super Villains for all consoles, Soul Calibur 6 for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and the Dark Souls trilogy launches for the PS4 and Xbox One. That's it for the gaming news this week. Catch an app and tune in next week for an, another update. It feels like we have the physical disc death conversation once every three to four I months. Know, right? It does. It's like, now it's going to die. Okay. Uh, now it's going to die. <laughs> yeah. I just, I mean, there's obviously pl plenty of game, like places where you just don't have internet or um, I've had cases where I'm just offline. Yep. You know, like at my uh, folks place or something to that regard. And, you know, having a physical disc is great. Um, I don't have any nostalgia for it. I don't think you'd, I don't know if you care to have a big old book of games or like actual discs. I, I don't. I actually find the convenience of going digital a lot easier and better, especially being a dad and just like keep things away from the kids and, you know, I can select everything online. And speaking of Red Dead Redemption 2, I'm getting the physical disc, but later. So like a digital mm. game, you can get 1201 launch date physical oh, game interesting. you kind of have to wait so yeah i mean yeah that's one of the coolest things too is like the and i've, I've only done it once with no man's sky but like the midnight midnight release of a game especially if you've pre-downloaded it oh yeah which, uh, which obviously doesn't work with the physical disc yeah. um so that i mean that was awesome oh that was <laughs> i remember there was um uh, i was listening to a podcast and i mean we mentioned call of duty there in the news and this gaming dad and his son uh, the the yearly Call of Duty refresh was kind of their event, you know. So this one day a week, or a year, sorry. And I think sometimes even like you take the kid out of school for like a day or so. Cause yeah. They, they really love it. This is a real bonding thing for them. And the night they would do the midnight launch, so they go to the game GameStop at like midnight. They'd open the door, special event, buy the disc, right. come home. Yeah. And you know that's all. That, that's a really cool thing to share with your son or your daughter, but. I don't think. <laughs> I, just, I, I always think when I think physical disc, like that's the, the very moment where it's just like, oh, that's a that's a whole thing. Like the going to the store, buying the disc, and with with your kids, like that experience of shopping with, yeah, you, you know, with a parent or with a son or a daughter, and the purchase of the disc in the store, like that that, that entire experience of parent money kid store. <laughs> the drive back home with the anticipation like now it's like hey, you want this game okay button press click <laughs> X. and then you have there you can watch a countdown timer and when it kind of like goes for live, two days yeah yep, you can do that watch the preload yeah but now the it was i don't know how do you feel about the news with call of duty uh black ops 4 doing so well like i think i was taken aback a bit by it and i'm trying to really suss out how i feel about it yeah. being so successful I I I haven't played Call of Duty since I think remastered the remat no Call of Duty Modern Warfare two, 
which was mm. ages ago. <laughs> so that, it, it was interesting to see them it, as best as I understood it. Um, it seemed like they started to lag a little bit. You know, like there's a yes. couple releases that were kind of let's call it middling. Yep. I, you know, the low. I think there'll always be a base there, but it wasn't the blowout success. And most of the stories are around. This one's not doing so well. It's kind of the same yep. thing. Yep. And then this one comes out. And the announcement of it was kind of negative, where it's, oh, they're just doing, they're just trying to be Fortnite, and it's going to battle royale, can't yeah. believe it. But upon launch, like, well, it's been nothing, kind of a positive coverage, where it's, yeah. this is actually kind of fun, and it's like, the numbers are ridiculous, like, it's the biggest numbers, like, as you said in the news, it's like, biggest numbers ever for a release, like, surpassing Destiny and such? Yeah, for Activision, yeah, biggest uh, day one for them, which is insane and this game doesn't have a single player it's strictly multiplayer so wow. even dropping well, that it means more time to like polish the actual servers and all, the online play and it's even tighter if that's like the main i think it's the main draw of the game yeah like, oh I, for sure yeah yeah so that, i think it's a good it feels good i, I think it's a good news story where it's this other flagship product that's been there so long, it's not Fortnite for a change. It's a huge story. So I guess like it's uh, it, it's interesting to see the comeback. I, I did not think with the previous year's um, performances they could have pulled it off, but no, hey, yeah. kudos. They did it. Yeah, same. It was surprising. Even just the age of the series and the franchise, it's just, well, they yeah. reinvented themselves and, and got that. I don't know, made up some ground. Yeah. I wonder if they can shift the uh, streamers at all. So we'll, we'll a little see. less Fortnite, a little more Call of Duty. Probably not. <laughs> Probably <Yeah>. never. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> now the, um, so have you ever worked a hundred hour work week? I have not. Have you? That's insane. I have. I have. have? It's bad. Yeah. It's, oh my God. No. It's, it's really bad. It's, <laughs> I don't know. So the story strikes me as a, um, when I did it, you know, it was, um, extreme dedication and I definitely don't regret it. Like it was just us and like the team putting it all on the line to try to make something happen. So that it was a real camaraderie, a real, um, a heck of an experience to go through. And, you know, I was a young enough dude at the time to be able to take it. Right. It's pretty messed up afterwards, but the, <laughs> uh-huh. the, um, I suppose the, what kind of taints me about this one is it's more the expectation of it, like the yeah. the expected crunch time of it's like oh it's crunch time yeah. now so everybody forget everything else you have to do within yep. your families and your social life you now you have to do this because you're game developers and you also may <laughs> you might be laid off afterwards. <laughs> and and that's that's the sad part of it is that they've developed this game for probably six or seven years now. And there's still a crunch time. Do you know what I mean? Like there's still those hundred yeah. hour weeks that, you know, these people put in and they're saying that they're, you know, they could, they could have stopped if they wanted to. I'm like, well, you're not really creating that culture where they're senior level mm-hmm. and, Oh, well you have to be senior. You have to put in a hundred hours. That's how you make it. It's not cool. Yeah, and especially for us, the gaming dads. I mean, the, it's, it certainly was a shift where, I could never do that again because the impact yeah. that would exist on the family. Yeah. Like to kind of punish your family for work so much would be, it's definitely beyond me now. Yeah. So if these folks have families and they're kind of put, you know, they are implored to put in this type of effort. Yeah. It's kind of, <laughs> it's not worth it. It's just, it's not, I don't know. And I don't know where you go from there because you, you obviously, I don't know. You're almost birthing this game. If you've worked on it for that amount of time, even like, Hmm. You want oh, maybe you should uh, maybe you should cancel your pre-order, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I I'm not going to put that sell on you. My That's, pre-order. <laughs> That's not fair. But the <laughs> no, no, but uh, like it did make me like look twice at it, and I knew like some game developers are kind of shady that way, where it's you know there is a crunch time, and everybody's like all hands on deck sort of thing, and it's probably yeah, very. I mean, I can tumultuous. you know I'm. I could still, I could appreciate it still, where it's just, you're getting close. It's time to put in a little bit of extra time so you can hit it. But yeah, to that extent, it's like, ugh. but no, it don't feel guilty about the game. You, 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 
<laughs> you are good. You are forever good because of your Battlefront Two stance. That's right. So you, you you're, you're principled. That's right. Yeah, very principled. <laughs> when I want to be. Uh, now the man games with the toys with ga- games with toys like the physical toys. Yeah, I thought died. No. And instead, it's come back, but much like a zombie, worse. Yes. Than, than the living incarnation of it. Where it's like, okay, so you want to buy this cute doll and you want to like tap your controller with it and then it shows up in game. Yeah, that's Okay, right. that, that's kind of fun. Neato. But man, yep. you get extra lives if you have it? Yeah. That's garbage, man. That yeah, sucks. Yeah, it's the whole, <laughs> it's, yep, it, I don't know how or why, but, and those toys aren't cheap. Yeah. <laughs> They're about 25 bucks US each, so, and that's just for like one ship and then you can buy different parts of the ship that all connect together like some sort of mechanical beast <sighs> Like a Power Rangers just, thing. Like I'll say that, um, like I've with a game like No Man's Sky, like they had this physical mm-hmm. version of your starter ship, and like it looks so cool. And I thought to myself, like that would be. I thought to myself that would be cool to own. I could right. almost see something as where, a collector, right? Let, like, yeah, 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 yeah. As a collector, to have it, um, I could almost see something where it's you, much like Lego, you buy parts and you build your ship physically. And yep. then when you tap, that ship gets in. You know, that, yep. that creativity, that physicality, that, like, working on dexterity to build something, that's kind of cool. That's fun. But, man, just it's just this is literal money for lives. That's garbage. <laughs> it's just like... Yeah. It, it just felt like there's cool places you could have gone with that, and you went this garbage greed way. And it's like, damn, man. Like, yeah like 20 bucks for an extra life exclusives and yeah no that's all and and nintendo has star fox right so they have the star fox ship with little little parts to add to it i'm sure there's going to be other things that come out that are exclusive and you can't get them anywhere else or xbox gets it first and i don't know <laughs> Some, i don't want my kids to get well, into you. it i've been through the skylanders phase the skylanders phase was a whole collecting of stuff see so here we are raging at physical toys we started right. with rage. We'll end with rage. No physical Sounds toys, good. damn it. <laughs> Until it's a much more interesting <laughs> way. Oh, so thank you so much for listening. This has been New Dad Gaming. Um, if you'd like to reach out to us with a question, a game tip, a dad story like featured today, both <laughs> a number of dad gaming rage stories, which are so great <laughs> to talk through. Uh, you can go to our website at newdadgaming.com and submit it there. Uh, you could talk to us on Twitter or join the Facebook group. If you'd like to subscribe to the podcast, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many other podcasting services. Um, If you like the show, we would really appreciate a like, a review, or a share as we try to reach out to as many gaming dads as we can. Listen, there's a bunch of angry gaming dads out there, and we got to make sure that they have a place to vent it all. (laughs) Because, damn it, it's just going to... If if we're not careful, it's just going to build up, and you're going to be throwing Xboxes into the air, and ain't nobody <laughs> <Yeah>. want that. <laughs> no one wants that. So thank you so much for listening. Until next time, my name is Trevor, and I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And I'm Jeff. I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. Jeez, Jeff, calm down. You don't need to be so angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> just I could hop into No Man's Sky, go to your happy place. Yeah, just chill be- out bring you down on a, on a planet that's toxic that's great <laughs> oh well that's right like that, that game puts me to sleep and it enrages you it does well, yeah that's one rage story i can go into but maybe for another time i'll repeat we'll that. save that for another time <laughs> yeah <laughs> see you next week see ya.